So the other factor that we all need to know about right now in our time is that the main, the main way that our hormones get flipped upside down is environmental toxicity, first and foremost. I mean, in the last 70 years, there's been like up to 77,000 identifiable chemicals that have been spewed into our world based, in, based on the Industrial Revolution, right? And most of these chemicals, which are not well understood, but what we do know is that pesticides, what's that? That's rodenticides, herbicides, insecticides, algicides, all that stuff that we're, we're just spewing on things because we're in this like kill, 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 antibioticizing everything because we think that that's going to get us somewhere. Those, those chemical fertilizer, plastics, plasticizers, like when you drink water and it tastes like plastic, that's not plastic stevia, right? That's actually leached plastic chemicals in the water because again, plastic's a solvent, so it will dissolve whatever you put into it outside of glass. Always upgrading to glass. Plastic is pretty much the worst thing ever for your body. Cosmetics, birth control pills. You know the deal, right? What all those are, they're xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogen basically refers to a concept called the toxic mimic or the toxic imposter. It's a, really good, it's a really good idea, is that when you look at toxicity, you look at radioactive isotopes, you know, like radiation toxicity from Chernobyl in 1986 in Russia, nuclear reactors that just spewed out um, radioactive toxicity all over the place. And then you look at Fukushima, you look at all the, the nuclear detonations that have happened since the 1940s, What's interesting about that is that when you get to the root of it, you realize, okay, these radioisotopes are actually radioactive minerals. And what they do is when you're nutrient deficient, say you have a zinc deficiency, you have a sulfur deficiency, iron deficiency most likely, you have an iodine deficiency, the receptor site is open. So what these radioactive isotopes or contaminated minerals do is they seep right into that receptor site. They, they block it up because your body is suctioning. It's trying to find something identifiable, right, to fill the void. So in terms of your thyroid, what's the number one element or mineral that powers the thyroid? Iodine. iodine. We all know that, right? Now, iodine is Iodine deficiency among newborns, pregnant mothers, is the number one um, correlation or causation for mental retardation of a newborn baby. The malformation of their brain. Iodine deficiencies. Iodine is present in every tissue in your body, and iodine is anti-carcinogenic. It's anti-cancer. It increases what's called apoptosis, which is the spontaneous breakdown of a mutated cell. Cancer, what is that? A viral infection, a fungal infection, the combination of a viral and fungal f infection. And in a lot of cases, it's a hormonally driven mutation, like an estrogen toxicity. So what iodine, basically, what, what these radioactive iodine-131 is what it's called, if, you, if your thyroid, for example, doesn't have enough iodine, that radioactive iodine will fit right in. So we heard of like Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves disease, right? These thyroid diseases. What's that all about? Seems kind of obvious to me now. But also just to put this out there so you know, iodine on the periodic table of the elements that we all kind of like bought into or that we believe is accurate um, is a halogen. You guys remember this like in science or whatever? I mean, I skipped those classes. I had to relearn all this. I actually have the periodic tables poster on my wall, just so I, like, I keep on this stuff. And so what a halogen is, it's like a vaporous atom. It's a vaporous element. We think of elements as geological matter that's in the ground. There's four elements that are vaporous. There's iodine, there's chlorine, 
There's bromine, which is a preservative used in a lot of uh, inferior breads and stuff like that. And there's fluorine, fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide. Chlorine that's found in our municipal water supply, that's found in our showers. You know where I'm going with this, right? They all share a similar receptor site. If so, if you're underneath a gas chamber, a chlorinated gas chamber, then it's very likely that you're getting that chlorine in that receptor site. That's why we use iodine prophylactically, preventatively, but we also use it to push out toxic metals. That's the, that's the point that I wanted to drive in about iodine, is that iodine is not some little thing, some little mineral supplement. It's actually a necessity to have in your like medical bag that you have. Just like with your Band-Aids, just like with all your, your hydrogen peroxide and all that, because we live in a radioactive world. It's just a fact. So we need certain little things like that that are going to keep us protected, and it pushes out, it discharges, it displaces radioactive uh, iodine and other halogens. Make sense? Right? So that's one thing.